I've been working with SvelteKit a lot lately, and it inspired me to build a library for Firebase called SvelteFire, or more accurately, update a library that I built a few years ago. I tried to avoid building new JavaScript libraries unless absolutely necessary, but in this case, there was an opportunity to make building real-time apps so much easier that I just couldn't resist. Here I have a real-time app that has user authentication with a blog post owned by a user along with real-time comments nested below it. And believe it or not, I wrote all this code entirely in the HTML. When you combine Svelte stores with slot props, it's crazy how much you can accomplish. Like, we can declaratively combine multiple real-time data sources, and whenever a component is destroyed, it will automatically unsubscribe from that data source, eliminating the need for you to write a bunch of ugly code like this to do it manually and lifecycle hooks. In today's video, I want to break down how I built this library to show you some advanced Svelte concepts that might change your life in your own projects. So the first thing I found myself doing in my own projects over and over again was putting Firebase data into Svelte stores. One issue though with real-time data is that you need to unsubscribe when it's no longer needed, otherwise you'll have a bunch of unnecessary reads to your database that aren't being used by the UI. Normally you'd want to do that during the onDestroy lifecycle hook. However, this code is very ugly and can be problematic if you want to use the same data source in multiple places. To address this problem, I built a custom Svelte store. Well, three of them actually. One for the current user, one for a collection in Firestore, and one for a single document in Firestore. A custom store is just a function that returns an object with a subscribe method on it. To implement the user store, we use the built-in writable store from Svelte and set the Firebase current user as its default value. Now things get interesting in the second argument where we have a function that can send notifications or new data to the store. In this case, we want to listen to the on auth state changed event in Firebase to update the store whenever the user signs in or signs out. In addition though, we can also return a function here, which will be called when there are no more subscribers to the store. In that case, we no longer need the Firebase current user, so we call its unsubscribe function. Now this is super useful because you can use the store anywhere in the application and subscribe to the current user in Firebase by simply putting a dollar sign in front of it. The logic for collections and documents is basically the same, but I've included some additional magic to automatically unwrap the data and include the document ID. You no longer have to map each snapshot to the data, which is one thing that's always annoyed me about the Firebase SDK. And another issue I have with Firebase is that they make it hard to pass a generic to your unwrapped data. In my library, you can pass in a generic interface to get IntelliSense on the data fetch from the database. That means if you're using TypeScript and you subscribe to a store that has a generic, you'll always know the shape of the data that you're working with. The last thing I want to point out is that this library doesn't do data fetching on the server. However, you can pass it a start with argument that will initialize the store with some data that you fetched on the server. Data fetching with Firebase on the server is actually a lot easier, and I didn't really feel like there's any opportunity to improve it with this library. That's it for our stores, and we can use those throughout a Svelte application, but things get incredibly simplified when we abstract these stores into a Svelte component. The user component is only 19 lines of code. It simply takes that user store, subscribes to it, and if the user is logged in, it displays the default slot. Otherwise, it has an additional slot for signed out UI. What's really important here is that the default slot has a user slot prop. This allows you to access the user data directly in the HTML in other components. And you'll also see I have this cache money slots interface up here, which is a special interface in Svelte that allows us to strongly type that slot prop, so you get IntelliSense as well. What makes this so magical is that you can have this user component in your UI somewhere, then take the user ID from that slot prop and pass it down to another component like a collection to fetch a bunch of relational data for that user. More on that in just a minute, but one other thing that annoys me about Firebase, especially the version 9 SDK, is that you need to pass the auth and Firestore instances to almost every function that you use. To get rid of that requirement, I built a Firebase app component that provides Firestore and auth as context to all of its children. Most applications only use one Firebase project, and this is just one more step we can use to simplify the code. Now finally, let's take a look at our document and collection components. They work just like the user component. The default slot shows the data from the store, while the other slot shows loading UI. On the default slot, we have some additional props, like the document reference itself, and for collections, we can also show the length of that query, which is a common thing you'll want to do in the UI. The only thing I'm disappointed about with this component is that I wasn't able to figure out how to get a generic to work reliably in the components. It is possible to use generics in Spelt components, but I had a hard time figuring out how to do it elegantly in this library. I'm open to ideas if anybody out there wants to contribute. So those are the main building blocks of Svelte Fire. Another cool thing I want to point out though, 
is that I built it with Svelte Kit, which has a new built-in library package template thing. This is really cool because you can develop your library in the lib directory and then test everything out on the routes. To wrap things up, let's build a full stack app with Svelte Fire in about 30 seconds. Add the Firebase app at the top level, then check to see if the current user is logged in. If they are signed in, we can grab a document associated to that user ID. The data is available as a slot prop that we can rename to post. Now that post might have a nested subcollection of comments, which we can then fetch with the collection component. The data is an array of real-time comments fetched from the database. And we're done. That actually only took 20 seconds, and I think that's the easiest real-time app I've ever built in my life. At this point, Svelte Fire is just experimental, but I'm hoping you learn some patterns here that you might be able to apply in your own project. If you're a Fireship Pro member, I'm working on a full Svelte Kit course that will go into stuff like this in far greater detail, and that should be available in about a month or so. I also have a new Stripe course that's almost finished, so stay tuned for that as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.